सदाशिवसमारंभां शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्पदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बागरायण सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम ओम सहनावत सहन भक्तु सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वीनावतीमस्तुमाषा वह ये ओम शांत शांत शांति धातुब्रह्म संप्रोक्त जीव आख्यात प्रकृति धातुब्रह्मात्मने नम नारायण परो व्यक्ता दंडम व्यक्त संभव मंडस्यांतस्मे लोका सप्तवीपाच So we were looking at uh, 67, but uh, uh, since uh, there was a question last time and uh, I fixed an error that I had made, we'll just revisit that shloka. I'll just make a clarification again. Uh, I think 60. Uh, four is it? 64, I think. Yeah, so in Ragadvesha, Vyukta is too. So there Vyukta, uh, generally the advice that I give people, if you are not clear about the meaning, use the, uh, use the Bhavartha, some Bhavartha. So Lut, Lut is a good uh, uh, Pratya to use there. So Vyogaha, if you look at the meaning Vyogaha, you contrast it against Sanyoga. So Sanyoga, Vyoga are exactly opposite to each other. Uh, but Vyukta, uh, Vyukta Vyuj Dhatu, Vipurvaka Yuj Dhatu plus the, if I had seen that, I would have hopefully not made this mistake. But Vyukta I took as Vipurvaka Yukta. Although in derivation that's how finally it would be. But Vyuj itself is treated as a Dhatu by uh, Apte. Generally they go by uh, these meanings and then they reverse engineer and consider it as a Dhatu. However, it is a it is Yuj Dhatu. And uh, like jnana and vijnana are opposed to each, uh, are not opposed to each other. Similarly, here, vi- yukta and vyukta may be confused that way, but vyukta has an opposite meaning to yukta. It is not vishesha there. The meaning is uh, there is no exact uh, vritti there. So uh, the uh, dictionary said uh, vyoga vishishta. So it used the word vyoga. So vyoga vishishta is vyukta. Thereby. I had got an opposite meaning to what it really was and uh, since I had spent almost all the time uh, tracking uh, election results, I uh, didn't focus on the class, uh, I lost track of time. So I apologize again for the mistake that I had made. Uh, this Vyukta means uh, bereft of, so free from or bereft of, so Vyukta will not have the meaning of uh, Yukta, it will have the meaning of opposite to Yukta. So, Raga Dvesha, so where there is Vyoga, through those Indriyas which have Vyoga means, which have separated from Raga and Dvesha because of the Sadhana, then Vishyan, in, Vishyan Indriyaihi Charan, so uh, Vishya, Raga Dvesha Vyuktaihi Indriyaihi Atma Vashya and therefore they are Atma Vashya Indriyas and through those Indriyas, Indriyaihi uh, Vishyan Charan and Vishyan Charan is what? I had taken Vishyan with uh, Raga Dveshi Vyuktehi Indriyehi, but Vishyan Charan, their Charan does not have the meaning of uh, Gati, as in Char Gati, but Gatyarthaka Dhatu can be interpreted as Jnanarthaka. All Gatyarthaka Dhatus have Jnanartha, and this is the meaning that Bhagavan Bhashyakara takes. I looked up other Tikas also, they directly give the meaning as Upalabhyamana, because that's what Bhashyakara says, Upalabhyamana. So, Charan, one who is Cognizing. So, Chardhatu, Gatyarthaka gets Jnanartha meaning and thereby through these Indriyas and Indriyai, uh, Karnartha Tritya, so Karne Tritya, Charan, one who is cognizing or perceiving these Vishyas now, through which Indriyas, earlier which were Ragadvesha Yukta, 
now due to sadhanas they are raga dvesha vyukta opposite to that and they are free from raga dvesha now and through those indriyas which are under control atma vashyehi the person vidhe atma uh, who is now charan seeing he is still seeing the vishayas but vishayas are are atma vashya they are under uh, indriyas are un, under the control of atma therefore in the vishayas the vishayas he does not have any raga or dvesha towards the vishayas and thereby prasadam adigachati and prasadam we are seeing prasannata so i just wanted to reclarify this uh, and correct the mistake i had made okay moving on uh, 67 we finished in the 67 shloka 67 shlo is uh, 67 shloka we have seen charatam hindriyanam yat manah anuvidiyate tad manah asya sadakasya ambasi vayu hu navam yo prajnam harati and the person who uh, uh, asya sadakasya for a for a sadaka is sadakas prajna sadakas prajna sambandha shashti prajnam harati how like like a boat which is carried away at sea due to the wind due to a stormy wind and the stormy wind is the hetu all karta but stormy wind is the hetu which takes away by force it takes away prajna this person is a viveki but still under the influence of indriya so indriyanam hi charatam yat manah anuvidiyate the mind which is engaged in these when it is engaged that time what will happen that that kind of a mind asya sadakasya uh, prajnam harati the mind will take away if the mind is not uh, uh, in in the yoga language if the mind does not follow the antaranga sadhana then bahiranga it will become and thereby charatam hi indriyanam yat manah anuvidhiyate thereby one who is trying to go inwards is unable to and then prajnam harati buddhi cannot act viveka cannot act further bhagavan bhashyakara says yatato hi iti arabhya or iti upanyast uh, whatever was said here in the 60th shloka yatato hi uh, kaunteya so one who is trying even for that kind of a person it is difficult Other, unless he is very alert so iti upanyastasya arthasya the idea which was begun here which was started here anekada upapattim uktva in many ways the the idea was detailed in the other shlokas uh, these eight shlokas which have gone by tam cha artham upapadya upasamharati now he concludes that idea which was uh, raised the idea which was brought about in this eight shloka he concludes this idea what is that um, we'll see in the next shloka tasmad yasya mahabaho nigrihitani sarvashah indriyani indriyarthebhyas tasya prajna pratishtita so answer is to who's who is this sita prajna what is his lakshana so here tasya prajna pratishtita who is that conclusion is tasmad yasya mahabaho both sides were talked about one who has his viveka Uh, retained he has his viveka retained because buddhi has has a say over the mind and why is that because his indriyas are under control thereby this person can get the purushartha however on the other hand even for a person who is striving yatato api kaunte even that yat even a muni who is struggling to bring his even he is striving to uh, hold on to buddhi still if he is not alert the mind will be carried away by indriyas which will be dragged by vishayas and thereby antaranga sadhana will not be possible and tita prajnatvam will not come by so tasma therefore that is that tasma because on both sides we have seen that purushartha siddhi will not happen on one hand and one who is alert who can retain his uh, have control over his indriyas can achieve purushartha siddhi therefore tasmat yasya mahabaho maha he mahabaho tasmat he mahabaho
इंद्रिया निगृहता सर्वश सर्वश इज एडवर्बियल से इंद्रिया सर्वश इंद्रियाभ्य फ्रॉम ऑल दी इंद्रिया निगृहता दे आर् कंट्रोल दे आर् रिस्ट्रेन्ड सो निगृहता रिस्ट्रेन्ड इन ऑल वेज सर्वश इन ऑल वेज हे महाबाहो यस्य मुने अथवा यथे और साधक से इंद्रिया इंद्रियाभ्य निगृहता तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता भवति ओनली दैट पर्सन हूज इंद्रिया आर कंट्रोल्ड कंट्रोल्ड एंड निगृहता रिस्ट्रेन्ड रिस्ट्रेन्ड टर्न बैक फ्रॉम इंद्रियाभ्य फ्रॉम दि अर्था फ्रॉम दि ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इंद्रिया ईच इंद्रिया हेज इट्स ओन ऑब्जेक्ट एंड ऑल दीज इंद्रिया फ्रॉम देर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑब्जेक्ट वन शुड बी एबल टू सर्वश इन ऑल वेज वन शुड बी एबल टू रिस्ट्रेन एंड वन हू कैन डू दैट फॉर दैट पर्सन तस् प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता होती हिज प्रज्ञा विल बी विल बी स्टेबल इट विल नॉट बी हाईजैक इन कॉन्ट्रास्ट टू दी अर्लियर वन अंभसी वायु एवं प्रज्ञा न हरति प्रज्ञा न हरति देर फोर तस् प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता होती तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता भवती सो सिंपल अन्वय हे महाबाहो यस्य इंद्रियाणी इंद्रियाभ्य और इंद्रियाभ्य यस्य इंद्रियाणी इंद्रियाभ्य यस्य इंद्रियाणी निगृह निगृहता तस्य एंड भवती सर्वश सर्वश एंड सिंस इट विल सर्वश विल बी सर्वश निगृहता सर्वश निगृहता दिस इज एडवर्वियल टू निगृहता तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता होती सो दिस इज द स्थित प्रज्ञ लक्षण यो यम लौकिको वैदिक व्यवहार सह उत्पन्न विवेक ज्ञान से स्थित प्रज्ञ से अविद्या कार्यवाद अविद्या निवृत्त निवर्तन अविद्या विद्या विरोधा निवृत्ति स्तुटी कुरवन आह सो यम यम लौकिक वैदिक व्यवहार दिस लौकिक एंड वैदिक व्यवहार कर्म विच इज बीइंग टॉक्ड ऑल दी क्रिया ऑल दी एंगेजमेंट इन लौकिक एंड वैदिक कर्म विच इज बीइंग डिस्कस्ड अर्जुन इज इन दी बैटल फील्ड बिकॉज इट इज हिज धर्म सो इट इज अ धर्म फॉर अ क्षत्रिय टू फाइट दी बैटल एंड वेदर इट इज लौकिक और वैदिक ही हेज टू एंगेज इन the battlefield for and taking arjuna has an example it is mentioned for everyone so drawing the chariot as well as uh, guiding the chariot here all these are his laukika dharma but vaidika dharma is also there that he has to do some rituals and then uh, uh, do whatever is important for a kshatriya to do सो लौकिक वैदिक व्यवहार एंड दिस इज ट्रू फॉर एवरी वन विच एवर वर्ल्डली एक्टिविटी और प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटीज वन इज परफॉर्मिंग सह उत्पन्न विवेक विज्ञान से उत्पन्न विवेक विज्ञान से वॉट कैंड ऑफ समास वुड दिस बी एनी आइडिया तत्पुरुष और बहुरी सो वेन आई आस्ट वॉट कैंड ऑफ समास You have to tell me whether it is uh, tatpurusha or bahuri. If I ask you which kind of tatpurusha or which kind of bahuri, can we can go into details? Bahuri. You can see utpanna is tanta. So utpanna tanta nishtha puro uh, bahuri ho. So utpanna viveka vijnana. So utpanna viveka vijnana. Sorry, not vijnana, vijnana. Utpanna viveka vijnana sya. उत्पन्न विवेक ज्ञान यस्य विवेक ज्ञान यू कैन से मध्यम पद लोपी 
and uh, bring out a better meaning. Say Viveka Rupa Jnana, it is Karma Dharaya. Viveka Jnana is uh, Viveka Rupa Jnana. So that is Viveka Jnana. And Utpan, Utpannam Viveka Jnana Yasya. Saha Utpanna Viveka Jnana. It will become Pullinga and then Tasya Utpanna Viveka Jnana Sya. Who is that? Siddha Pradnya Sya. Siddha Pradnya for whom Viveka Jnana is born. Utpanna. So that person is Siddha Pradnya. And Siddha Pradnya Sya Utpanna Viveka Jnana Sya. So Vyavahara. This Vyavahara which is talked about. What is that? Avidya Karya This Laukika Vyavahara and Vaidika Vyavahara. Both are due to Avidya. They are Avidya Karya. Avidya Kama Karma. So whether it is Laukika Karma or Vaidika Karma, Yavahara is Karma. So whether it is Laukika or Vaidika, still that Karma is Avidya Karya. Why Avidya Karya? Because due to Avidya, one is considering oneself as a limited person. And when once one is limited an individual, then being an individual, one sees plurality outside and different from oneself is the world around, whether it is of people or things, still it is different from this person and therefore he or she wants another person or wants to deal with another person, Ragadvesha and there is Ragadvesha for Vishaya also, objects also. Therefore, Avidya Karya it is because Avidya driven, Kama will be there, Kama Ragadvesha Ityadi and then Avidya Kama Karma, then Karma Phala Avidya will continue, Samsara continues. Therefore, avidya karya tvat utpanna viveka jnanasya siddha pragnasya avidya karya tvat avidya nivrutto nivartate. So, what happens? Yo am laukika vaidika vyavharasa utpanna vijnanasya siddha pragnasya nivartate. For this siddha pragnya, this laukika vyavhara and vaidika vyavhara both will go. If one becomes a siddha pragnya, both Laukika and Vaidika, Vyavhara will go. We have seen earlier that two paths are there. One path is, is um, engaging in karma. Other is sannyasa, nivritti marga. Pravritti marga, nivritti marga. These are the two paths shown in uh, Gita, by Gita Charya. And here what happens once one becomes Tita Prajna, that is a Jnani. Tita Prajna is Jnani naha. Avidya nivrutta nivartate because the vyavahara is possible only when there is individuality. That individuality will have gone. Therefore, avidya karyatva, avidya nivrutta. By avidya nivrutti, how will it happen? Siddha prajna. So, prajna, prajna is a vidya, and that prajna vidya through vidya, avidya nivrutti will happen. So, jnane na avidya nivrutti or vidyaya. Avidya Nivritti and Avidya Nivritta Satyam. Once Avidya Nivritti happens, Shashti Tatpurusha. Avidya Yaha Nivritti, Avidya Nivritti. Tasyam Avidya Nivritta Nivartate. Vyavahara Nivartate. Laukika Vaidikascha Vyavahara Nivartate. It will go, will drop off. And finally, what is said is that once this a person becomes Tita Pradnya, he has absolutely no Adhikara in karma really. The way Shruti talks about is that this person does not have Adhikara in karma because that karma will not give any phala anymore. Why should it give any phala? Earlier it was said that uh, we had seen this, uh, this he has uh, he has attained whatever his Krita Kritya. His Krita Kritya because um, I forget the shloka Brahman se vijanata. So uh, the the way uh, uh, this yeah, yeah, Avan Artho the Pane Sarvata Samplutu the Ket Avan Sarveshu Vedeshu Brahman se vijanata. Just like a person who wants little water. All the uh, resources of little water bodies in the Drishtanta and in the Darshtantika, all the karmas and karma phalas, what were they going to bring? What what are these small uh, water bodies going to bring? That is attained when one gets the, a huge water resource. Similarly, in the Darshtantika, when one becomes Sita Prajna, 
when he has nishta in atma, in, in shrutyartha, in shrutyartha which is moksha and that atma which is brahma, in that aham brahmasmi iti, once one has nishta, then that kind of a sthita pragnasya, brahmanasya, vijanata. So that is vijanan, who is, who knows, who knows that there is ekavakyata of the shruti and this is the tatparya of the shruti. This is the Purushartha Siddhi which Shruti is talking about through all mantras in Karma Kanda also. Then Tavan Sarveshu Vedeshu in all the Vaidika and ex by extension Bhashyagara said Laukika Karma also in Vaidika Karma itself is not there. Nitya Naimitika Karma is not there. Then what to talk about Kamya Karma whether it is in the Shruti as in not opposed to Shruti or it is uh, Laukika which is driven by ragadvesha one does not have any ragadvesha there is no one other than oneself therefore brahmana se vijanata tavan sarveshu vedesh what happened all the yavan artha all that artha is met purushartha siddhi has happened therefore uh, therefore what avidyayascha this thing avidya nivrutto nivartate therefore laukika vaidika karya nivartate this will go this will drop off on its own and therefore shruti says that Sarva, sarva, sarva karma sanyasi eva adhikara tasya tasya sita prajyasya sarva karma sanyasi eva adhikara he does not have adhikara in karma he has adhikara only in one and in uh, brahadarnika bhagavan bhashyakara takes this as a um, as a final vidhi final vidhi by shruti that that person should take sarva karma sanyasa should take sanyasa so that is what is called as uh, vidvat sanyasa with yajnavalkya took and then avidyayascha vidya virodat nivruttihi. Now this vaidika vivahara has gone. Avidya nivrutti. And why is this avidya nivrutti? How is this avidya nivrutti happened? I mentioned that Sita Prajna is a prajna. Prajna is this vidya therefore. He says because avidyayaha avidyayaha cha vidya virodat nivruttihi. Avidya and Ivritti, how does that happen? Because of Vidya Viroda. There is Vidya and Avidya are Virodhi. They are Virodhi to each other. That is the Nanyartha here. If you remember, there are six Nanyarthas. There are six Arthas for Nanj. The one of the Arthas is Abhava. And there are many people who translate this word Avidya as ignorance. Avidya is not ignorance. People who don't know Sanskrit, they will hold on to the word ignorance and then argue that avidya is absence of knowledge. Avidya is not absence of knowledge. Ajnana is not absence of knowledge. That is, it is uh, Shuddha misinterpretation of Sanskrit word. There are six meanings for Nanj and this is the Pramana also. Bhashyakara is saying that avidya nivrutta univartate. If avidya is abhavarte, then how can there be nivrutti of that which is absent? So this would mean what? Avidya nivrutto nivrutti means once that vidya, if you take abhavarte nanj, it will mean uh, when the, uh, the absence of vidya is gone. What does it mean by absence of vidya is gone? There is no meaning to absence of vidya going because absence was of vidya was, uh, the vidya was never there. So how can absence go? Absence will not go unless they are opposite. So there is, it is not absence. Vidya, avidya will not go. There is no nivritti of avidya because avidya was not there in abhavarte nanj for it to go. But by saying that avidya nivrutta nivartate and saying avidya karyatvat, this itself should tell you that it is not abhavarte nanj. If there is any logical thinking. Because avidya karya, how can anything which is absent have a karya? Avidyayaha karyam avidya karyam. How can there be abhavarte nanj here? If avidya is ignorance, then ignorance cannot have a karya. Nothing can come from absence of anything. So this is, there is one acharya in uh, Advaita also who does that. Uh, but uh, we should be very careful here that avidya has to be, uh, and then they blame the uh, Vyakhyanakaras to interpret this avidya as uh, equivalent to Maya and then saying that it is uh, Bhava Rupa, they say Abhava Rupa. 
they will blame the sub commentators and say Bhashyakara never said that. But Bhashyakara has said this. This should be Pramana. Avidya Karyatva. Avidya which is absent cannot have Karya. If it is absence, that means Avidya Karyatva means Avidya is Bhava Rupa. And our argument is not that it should be existent. We all we are saying that it cannot be non-existent. Avidya is not something which is non-existent. And Shruti also, Shruti also this, uh, it is compared with da darkness, Tamaha. And in science, they say that absence of light is darkness. But Tamaha is not that. Tamaha is presence of something. It is, it is a Bhava Padartha. Tamaha is treated as a Bhava Padartha. And Avidya is also a Bhava Padartha, Avidya or Ajnana. And in uh, Nanyartha, we know that Virodharte Nanj is one of the six meanings. Abhavarte is one. Virodharte Nanj is what is Tatsadrusha Mityadi. All those meanings are there. But here it is Virodharte. Therefore, Bhashyakara says Avidyayascha Vidya Virodhat. Avidya is what kind of meaning? Vidya Virodhini Avidya. That is the meaning of Avidya. Avidya is equal to Vidya Virodhini. That is the meaning of Nanj here. And therefore, Avidyayascha Vidya Virodhat. Avidya was causing, a, causing trouble because it was stronger than Vidya. Once Vidya becomes strong enough and then it becomes strong enough to take away Avidya completely, then Avidya Asya Vidya Viroda Nivrutti hi, when Vidya becomes stronger. Ityetam Artham Sputi Kurvan Aha. Sputi Kurvan is uh, uh, Chi Pratyanta. This Sputi E. E here is Chi, chi Pratya. And Chi Pratya is in uh, Abhuta Tadbhave. Abhuta Tadbhave means uh, when something is not there and is brought about. By using the Krudhatu, Bhudhatu, or Asdhatu, uh, what is called as uh, Kru Bhasti Yoga. Kru Bhasti Yoga means Kru Bhu or As. When there is Kru Bhu or As, these Dhatu is Yoga conjunction with what? Uh, association with some word which is which is expressing something which was not there and is brought about. So here, what is the meaning? Sputi Kurvan. Sputi Kurvan means Asputam Sputam Karoti. Asputam, what was not clear is made clear and this can also be uh, a guideline to see that avidya can be misinterpreted as abhavarte and all this whatever was this idea that avidya will go by vidya because it has vidya virodhini and avidya nivrutta laukika vaidikascha vyavahara nivartate iti etam artham sputi kurvan asputam which was not clear sputam karoti makes it clear that is the meaning of sputi kurvan. A simple word to tell you a long thing. What was not clear is made clear. Making clear. Kurvan is shatranta. So making clear. Sputi kurvan aha. The next shloka clears this. Yani shasarva bhutanam tasyam jagrati sanyami yasyam jagrati bhutani sa nishapashyato munehe. So there are these words Jagarti and Jagrati. Jagru is a uh, dhatu which is a little tricky, has additional sutras. So uh, Jagru is one of the seven dhatus which uh, uh, where uh, there is an abhyasa sanya which comes about. Abhyasa, abhyasa, there is an abhyasa karya in uh, Ashtadjai where abhyasa and abhyastam, there are sanya, abhy abhyasta is a sanya. Uh, for something where in third gana, when we looked at third gana, we saw in third gana there is a or sananta dhatus, there is uh, there is dvitvam and then there is abhyasa karya. But these dhatus, although this is the second gana dhatu, adadi gana dhatu, jagru, jagru nidrakshe, nidrakshe is the meaning of jagru. That dhatu, uh, even without going dvitvam, it gets this, this part gets the abhyasta sanya. And once Abhyastha Sanya comes in, then uh, this G, Tiptas G, Tiptas G, Siptas Tha, Mipasmas, the uh, Tinganta, uh, the Tingantas, the Ting uh, Pratyas, not Antas, Ting Pratyas, in that G, G gets, Jhontah uh, is the regular uh, uh, rule, the general rule is Jhontah, Jhontah means J, J, J becomes, Jakara becomes Ant. And thereby you get this uh, bhavanti or uh, uh, santi ityadi anti. So g is replaced by anti. But here adabhyastat, there is a sutra adabhyastat, uh, 
ant you don't see ant you see you see at at is the replacement there uh, because of abhyasta sanya and jagra has this additional role of abhyasta sanya and elsewhere it also there is a another sutra for uh, something where you get uh, when nit pratya follows then there is guna so here you see guna jagarti uh, jagarti you see guna and here you see yana sandhi yana sandhi would have happened but you would you would have expected jagranti but there is no, this is plural jagranti this is singular jagarti this is not singular jagrati so you see the difference jagarti jagrata jagrati not jagranti jagrati why because adabhyasta there is uh, instead of ant you get at because it is this jagra gets uh, here gets gets an abhyasta sanya so that's the difference uh, don't get confused in jagarti and jagrati both look similar uh, but you will see only t here so you may think that this t and this t be, one may misinterpret and get confused as to which is the singular this is singular jagarti where you see uh, where you get uh, uh, guna and here where you get uh, uh, you get yana sandhi so ya nisha sarva bhutanam ya sarva bhut nisha is night ya sarva bhutanam nisha bhavan so which is nisha nisha means night for everyone for all beings that which is night tasyam tasyam jagarti sanyami jagarti sanyami means one who has sanyama over his indriyas sanyami jagarti sarva bhutanam for all beings sarva bhutanam ya nisha bhavati tasyam nishayam in that so that which is night for all beings in that night in that night sanyami jagarti he he stays awake so he is awake that which is night in unto that night this person is awake sanyami whose indriyas are in control why because those who are that which is dark so night is what that which is not manifest that which is not clear uh, the tika kara there shankara and the tika says that nisha i'll take the there are many uh, ways to interpret this i'll give one which is uh, straight forward nisha means night and he compares that night with uh, in deep sleep at night when you sleep generally people uh, these days they wish sweet dreams nobody wants really nobody wants dreams one may want dream for a change you know when uh, that i don't want i am just uh, fed up with this uh, routine in jagrat avastha thereby swapna samme enjoy you know a little difference some may find nightmares and they want to wake up but the idea of going to sleep is what they want to withdraw the sense organs from all objects in jagrat and swapna avastha as well deep sleep is important therefore they say you should get good sleep even if swapna is there there is lot of disturbance and the sleep is not good because indriyas get tired indriyas get tired although the uh, stoola sharira is different in swapna still there is uh, the indriyas are same in fact indriya definition i think in uh, mandukya if i remember right in mandukya bhagwan bhashyakara gives the uh, mandukya or chandogya i don't remember somewhere he gives a uh, definition of what are indriyas indriyas are those in which uh, in dream one sees through which that is indriya one who cognize the cog- the cognition takes place through what through which uh, karanas instruments in dream those are called as indriyas very nice way to see you know so sarva bhuta nam ya nisha bhavati act in deep sleep those indriyas are also withdrawn so you are not awake you cannot you are not awake to the waking world you are not awake to the dream world therefore darkness is all that you see and you have absolutely no control on seeing the unmanifest you cannot see them as manifest the entire world is unmanifest the swapna prapancha is also unmanifest but tasyam sanyami jagarti and that is the reason this nisha is said but actually this is not for the world here sarva bhuta naam ya nisha bhavati is what they are they are as though asleep they are not as though they are really asleep they are really asleep to 
दे आर रियली अस्लीप टू दी आत्म तत्व बट तस्याम संयमी जागृत तस्याम आत्म आत्म विद्यायाम यू कैन टेक स्त्रीलिंग इट सेल्फ आत्म विद्यायाम संयमी जागृति सो ही इज अवेक ही इज अवेक जागृति एंड ऑन दी अदर हैंड अदर वे राउंड यस्याम भूतानी जागृति इन विच सो यस्याम जागृति दिस इज दी वर्ल्ड इन विच दे लिव जागृति यस्याम भूतानी जागृति भूतानी यस्याम भूतानी जागृति जागृति सा मुने है पश्चत मुने है पश्चतः पश्चतः मुने फॉर अ पश्चन मुनि पश्चन मुनि इज हु वन हु इज सीइंग आत्म तत्व सा पश्चतः मुने है निशा भवती दैट इज नाइट टू द पर्सन दीज पीपल आर इन्वॉल्व इन व्हाट भूतानी यस्याम जागृति सो यस्याम जागृति इज व्हाट सो यस्याम प्रपंचावस्थायाम दी ऑल दी दी अविद्यावस्थायाम यस्याम अविद्यावस्थायाम भूतानी जागृति दे आर अवेक अनटू व्हिच द वर्ल्ड द वर्ल्ड ऑफ मिथ्या मिथ्या प्रपंच सा सा पश्चत मुने निशा भवती दैट दैट पर्टिकुलर वर्ल्ड ऑफ देयर्स फॉर व्हिच दे हैव रियलिटी दे थिंक दैट दिस इज द वर्ल्ड for for this muni who is seeing the reality atma tattva for him what that is night this is the meaning here sarva bhutanam ya nisha bhavati tasyam sanyami jagrati jagrati sorry jagrati yasyam bhutani jagrati sa pashyata mune nisha bhavati so there is a long discussion on this and uh, there are uh, multiple ways it is seen but this is the straight forward meaning there vidushah tyakteshanasya sita prajyasya yatehe eva मोक्ष प्राप्ति ही हेर भाष्यकार मेक्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टंट पॉइंट दैट फॉर अ विद्वान हू इज दैट विद्वान देर मे बी लॉट ऑफ पीपल हू आर विद्वान वाई पी एच डी एंड आर एम चेयर फिलोसोफर्स ऑल्सो देर हू सीट एट होम एंड से दैट आई हैव स्टडीड एवरीथिंग ऑल दि शास्त्र आई हैव स्टडीड बट विदुषा त्यक्तेषण से वन हू त्यक्तेषण से इज अ बहुरी त प्रत्यय सी हियर निष्ठा सो त्यक्ता विदुषा स विद्वान त्यक्तेषण तस्य त्यक्तेषण से त्यक्त एषण मीन्स डिजायर्स डिजायर्स आर गिवन अप बाय हूम सो डिजायर्स आर गिवन अप बाय हूम दैट पर्सन इज हू त्यक्तेषण दैट विद्वान इज त्यक्तेषण विद्वान हू हैज कंट्रोल ओवर his sense organs and he has given up all the desires he does not want anything and what are the desires plural here vittesh putreshana vitteshana lokeshana this comes in bhradarnaka upanishad when yajnavalkya says that i am taking sanyasa and he says that i have absolutely no interest in the, we who have no interest in these lokas which kind of lokas the all sorts of worlds and he says here in eshana what kind of eshana putreshana progeny and thereby whatever progeny brings all sorts of uh, all sorts of attachments which pro progeny brings so progeny one does not want one wants to live through the progeny one wants more and more children one wants to live through them that is also the reason they want we we say that we want our children to get whatever we did not get we want them to live a better life than us this is the desire of parents but tantu vistare santana is what tantu vistare there is vistarana the mukhya atma which has one has lost sight of and has become mithya atma one one considers one this as the sharira and through sharira the putra uh, putri ityadi are born and thereby one extends into those shariras the genes ex expand into those and one has attachment there also thereby and this is the reason shraddha karma also has to be done a person gives up the sharira but there is an attachment with the progeny 
and even after one has given up the body, still sitting somewhere, one wants better gati, one wants better for um, gati for children also, and children want better better gati for their parents. Thereby, there is putreshana. So putreshana, vitteshana. There is wealth. One wants wealth not only for oneself, for several generations. So this that is another eshana. Third eshana is locationa. One wants to in today's scenarios multiple uh, uh, countries and even uh, now if moon travel is possible, one might want to go to moon as well. So locationa. But in the context of shastras, swarga, pramaloka, uh, Vishnu loka, Shiva loka, all these kailasa, vaikuntha, all these are what lokas. Just experiences. So loka, lokyatiti loka ha, where experiences or loka as in other worlds also. So tekteshanasya vidushaha stita prajnasya yate he and who can actually give up the desires. Sitting at home, mental sannyasa, a lot of people talk about whether it is possible, whether it was possible during Bhashyakara's time or even the time of Janaka is questionable. Today, you can uh, write it off. I mean, at least I have, I don't take that paksha that person can sit at home and become jnani. It's, in today's world, it is impossible. It was not there. It was not possible earlier as well because Bhagavan Bhashyakara himself questions that uh, even in Janaka's case, we do not know whether it was true. He gives benefit of doubt, but he, he says, yate heva, only for a yati, eva moksha prapti. Therefore, moksha prapti in orthodox tradition is not possible without sannyasa for this very reason. This does see, this is countered by saying that all sannyasis are not jnanis. Nobody said all sannyasis are jnanis. A jnani who has taken sannyasa can get moksha. That is all which is said. A sannyasi who has not got jnana will not get moksha. Other way around is not true. That, that does not disprove this. Sita prajnasi atehe eva moksha prapti natu asanyasina. For a person who uh, is not tekteshana, tekteshana, one may have attachment to uh, pita putra ityadi. That will take away a person from becoming a sannyasi. This commitment will take away that jnana. One may have, oh, let me make enough for my children and then I'll go. Never will it happen. One may say that, okay, let me, you know, just have a, have, do some Tirtha Yatra even. After that, I'll take some. Never going to happen. So, therefore, uh, Putreshana, Vitteshana, Lokeshana, Sita, the, as long as any of that is there, one person cannot really be Sita Prajna. So, that is another way to see it. Sita prajnasya tekteshana se vidushaha yate he eva moksha prapti natu asanyasinaha. Very loaded words. All these words are very loaded. Natu asanyasinaha. Why? Because kama kama, something else will be there. Kama here is vishaya. Uh, because uh, kama kama, you know, this kama and this kami. Kama asya stiti kami. But this kama here is, uh, should be understood as vishaya. Vishaya kaminaha. One who wants, desires vishayas. Ityetam artham drishtantena and those vishayas can be in the form of putra, vitta, loka, drishtantena pratipadeshan aha. Showing this through a, uh, this wanting to elaborate through the, uh, in example, drishtantena, he says, Apuryamanam achalap pratishtham samudramapah pravishanti yadvat, sadvat kamayam pravishanti sarve, sashanti maapnoti na kama kami. So, kama kami shanti na apnoti. That is the idea here. Kama kami naha asanyasi naha. What moksha prapti na bhavati. Shanti na apnoti. Shanti is finally, I had mentioned in the last part or the earlier, that shanti finally is what? That ultimate shanti is moksha. Shivam. What is auspicious shanti? That peace which will never go. Nitya shanti. So, that is the. Uh, Main sentence here. So, Kama Kami, Kama Kami Shantim Shantim Na Apnuti. That is our main sentence. And example here, Drishtantena. So, what is the Drishtanta? Here, Pravishanti Apuriyamanam Achalam Achalap Pratishtam Samudram. Apaha pravishanti. Apaha pravishanti. Apaha is plural. Strilinga. Apaha. 
I'll bring this later. Apaha Pravishanti, the waters enter. River waters, etc. All this water, all the river waters, they enter. What do they enter? So, Samudram. Samudram Pravishanti. Samudram Pravishanti. So, water, river waters enter the ocean. Does the ocean get, get flooded? Ocean, if you look at where the, uh, the river enters the ocean, the ocean is the ocean. It, it, it does not have any issue. It remains as turbulent or as peaceful as it was. Just because so many rivers entered it, the ocean does not have any issue. Ocean does not get carried away. Does not have an issue with that. It remains as still as it was. You may call the ocean as turbulent, but it is as turbulent even without uh, the rivers entering. As in, of course, rivers entering makes the ocean. You can also make, make an argument. But still, if you look at the ocean, the vast of, vastness of the ocean, you don't see, uh, if you don't see the rivers entering, still the samudra, the way it looks, even without knowing that where the river waters are coming from, the ocean remains as it is. You even look at the samudra and say that, oh, still ocean, you know, evening time, very still ocean. The rivers are still entering. Even when the rivers are entering, the ocean is still. And apurya manam, it is, it is completely full. But even when it, it does not overflow, that is the idea. Achala, achala pratishtam, achala pratishta yasya. That is achala pratishta and samudram, that samudra is achala, achala pratishtam. It remains unmoving even when full, apurya manam, completely full. A completely full ocean cannot overflow even if you add rivers unto it. And that way, yadvata, just like that, yadvata, yadvata, yad. Yadvata and Tadvata is like Yathatata. Yadvata Apaha Samudram Pravishanti and Achala, what Samudra is what? Apurya Mana and Apurya Mana Manam Achala Pratishtam Samudram Pravishanti Tadvata. So Yad uh, it is Apaha Apurana. Achala Samudram Pravishanti Yadvat. I don't know where to put Yadvat here. Uh, Yadvat is a little tricky to uh, make anvaya. Apaha Yadvat. So I'll say Apaha Yadvat. Apurya Manam Achala Pratishtam Samudram Pravishanti Tadvat Kamaha. Kama like rivers in the Drishtanta. Kamaha Yam Pravishanti. Yam Samudram. Samudravat. So this Yadvat you can take with each of these. Yat is here, ap, apavat kamaha. So, how should you understand this yadvat tadvat? You say, apaha in the drishtanta, apaha yadvat, apavat, that is apavat, apavat kamaha, yam pravishanti, apaha, apavat uh, kamaha, achala pratishtam samudram vat, yam pravishanti. So that is how you have to understand by taking Yadvat and Tadvat with each of these in the example and the exemplified. Apaha Yadvat Apurya Manam Achala Prasad Samudram Pravishanti Tadvat Kamaha Yam Pravishanti meaning without causing any turbulence Pravishanti and what kind of Kamas? All Kamas, Sarve Kamaha, all Kamas, all the desires may come and go. But this person is unmoved. Come and go means what? These are all there in the samskara. They may manifest. Even when one is meditating, they may come. But you just watch them and let them go. Do not get carried away. The mind is still. It Just like these waves on the ocean, they come and go. But the ocean actually should remain still. That way, yam pravishanti, saha, saha munihi, or yatihi, saha, sadhaka va, Shantim Apnoti. Sorry. Shantim Apnoti. Na Kama Kami means Kama Kami Shantim Na Apnoti. So you can bring, bring an Anuvritti and make two sentences like this. Yasma Devam Tasmat. And since this is so that Kama Kami Shantim Na Apnoti, while this person who is unaffected like a 
like an ocean which does not move, move, move as in does not move by rivers, is not moved by rivers, is not made turbulent by rivers, tasma therefore vihaya kaman yas sarvan puvan sharati nispruhaha nirmam o nirhankara sashanti madigachati. So vihaya kaman yaha kaman vihaya vihaya yaha puman yaha puman sarvan kaman vihaya having given up the person. So this person who has having given up all kamas, kamas is eshanas, all this tyakteshana and thereby has become tyakteshana, this puman charati, nispraha charati, nispraha san charati, nispraha means one who does not have nirgatas praha yasmat, saha nispraha, this person from whom all these prahas, kamas, eshanas have gone away, that person is nispraha bhuri. Nispruha san nirmamaha. So nirmamaha here you can do a, uh, uh, what is called bhava nirdesha. Nirgatam mamattvam yasmat. Nir, so mama is mama bhava. That mamattvam. So bhava nirdesha can be brought in and you can say nirgatam mamattvam yasmat. Nirgatam mamattvam yasmat. Saha nirmamaha. And Nirahankara same way. Bhauri same again. Saha Shanti Madhigachyati. That person will get Shanti. Saha Shanti Madhigachyati. Shanti is object to Madhigachyati. One attains. Attains Shanti. And Adhi is also showing that he will get it completely. That Shanti which is Nitya now. Therefore, Yaha Sarvan Kaman Vihaya having given up Yabanta Ohak Tyage Vipurvaka Ohak Tyage plus Twa will become Lyap. So, Vihaya Sarvan Kaman Yaha Sarvan Kaman Vihaya Yaha Puman Yaha Puman Sarvan Kaman Vihaya Nispruha Nispruha Nirmamaha or and Nirhankaraha Nirhankaraha Bhutva having become Bhutva is son. So Bhutva or son, I'll just add Nirhankara. Or you can also instead of say nispraha yaha puman yaha nispraha nirmaha nirma ahankara puman. That way also you can do, but I think this gives a better meaning because he has see he was not nispraha nirmaha nirahankara before he gave up uh, all the kamas. Therefore yaha puman sarvan kaman vihaya nispraha nirmaha nirahankara bhutva uh, san sorry san. Yaha, Saha, yes. or Nirankar, you can say Bhavati, not Bhutva, Bhavati, Saha, Shantim, Apnuti, or Adhigachati. He attains Shanti, sorry, so he attains Shanti. Since this is so, one has to focus on Indriya Nigraha. Saisha Jnana Nishta Stuyate. And this Jnana Nishta, this Shanti is Jnana Nishta Lakshana Shanti. That Shanti which comes by Jnana Nishta. That alone, nothing else is needed. Nothing else need, needs to be done as saying that I'll, I, only when I get the Samadhi, I'll get the Shanti. Samadhi, if it has to happen, it will happen. But Jnana Nishta Stuyate. This is also interpreted as Samadhi, but that Samadhi is Sahaja Samadhi. Need not be only Samadhi which is in the cave. If it is, well and good. If it is not, well and good, but the Shanti will come for a Jnani wherever he is. Sa Esha Jnana Nishta and that is this Jnana Nishta. Therefore, Shanti is Jnana Nishta Lakshana Shanti. Stuyate is praised. Is praised that Shanti, that uh, Jnana Nishta is praised. 
एषा ब्राह्मी स्थिति पार्थ नैना प्राप्य विमुयति स्थित काले ब्रह्म निर्वाण वृक्षति एंड हियर इवन अदर इंटरप्रिटेशन गिवन इज इज दैट दिस इज क्रम मुक्ति क्रम मुक्ति मीन्स गोइंग टू ब्रह्म लोका एंड गेटिंग ज्ञाना देर स्थिरता देर बट हियर बोथ वेज इट कैन विस्मी एषा ब्राह्मी स्थिति पार्थ ब्राह्मी स्थिति ब्रह्म संबंधी देर कैन बी नो संबंध देर दैट संबंध इज वॉट टेकिंग अवे ऑल संबंध इज दि स्थिति दैट निष्ठा इज नितरा स्थिति एंड दैट नितरा स्थिति इज ब्राह्मी रिलेटेड टू ब्रह्म मीन्स इट इज इट्स ब्रह्म ओनली ओनली ब्रह्म ब्राह्मी देर इज नथिंग एल्स देर दैट आत्मा इज ब्रह्म देर फॉर ब्राह्मी स्थिति देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन आत्मा एंड ब्रह्म देर फॉर एषा ब्राह्मी स्थिति दैट स्थिति नितरा स्थिति निष्ठा ज्ञान निष्ठा इट्स इज ब्राह्मी स्थिति एंड हे पार्थ दि स्थिति एषा स्थिति ब्राह्मी स्थिति हे पार्थ एंड एनाम स्थिति प्राप्य एनाम स्थिति प्राप्य विमुयति वन बिकम्स कंप्लीटली फ्री स्थित अस्याम अंत काले एंड अंत काले अस्याम स्थित इवन इफ वन हेज नॉट अटेन्ड दैट दैट स्टडीनेस कंप्लीटली एंड इवन एट दि एंड मोमेंट एंड मोमेंट इज लास्ट ब्रेथ दैट टाइम ऑलसो अस्याम स्थित्याम ज्ञान निष्ठायाम स्थित हेविंग रिमेन्ड इन दैट स्टेट even at the last moment and people think that last moment i'll do it it's not possible unless a person has practiced throughout the life something which has actually becomes one's uh, has become one's nature it's difficult to uh, hold on to that at the last moment because the indriyas are not that strong buddhi is not that strong unless one is a yogi it is not possible only for a yogi it is possible therefore this can be seen as antakale only if one can do then one who knows that my antakala is approaching and a person can actually uh, remain in that nishta at least in that moment he can gain nishta then a person can get brahma loka prapti and that brahma loka prapti here it is vidhe mukti also is seen here brahma loka prapti but if this person has nishta jnana nishta in the last moment then it is because he has uh, practice shravana mana nididhyasana for a good duration and then thereby that he remains in that nishtha and in that nishtha itself he has uh, taken the last breath sitva asyam antakale api brahma nirvanam rukchati brahma nirvanam rukchati attains brahma nirvana brahma eva nirvanam that that alone is mukti so he attains that uh, rukchati he attains that esha sthiti hi एषा ब्राह्मी स्थिति स्थिति ब्राह्मी स्थिति स्थिति भवती हे पार्थ एंड एनाम प्राप्य प्राप्य वन इज फ्री सो विमुय वन न मुहयति विमुयति मीन्स वॉट वन वन डज नॉट बिग come under the influence of moha that is moksha so one does not get deluded now himuyati means one does not get deluded again so there is no moha mohudhatu there is no moha and na himuyati means one is uh, that is mukti one is freed from that moha completely so prapye enam enam sthitim prapye enam sthitim prapye uh विमुयति एंड अंतकाले एंड दिस इज दि स्तुति व्हाट इज दिस स्तुति इवन इन द लास्ट मोमेंट सो ऑल दो दिस विल नॉट हैपन बट इफ इट कैन हैपन फॉर समवन लेट्स से वन हैज डन लॉर्ड ऑफ पुण्य एंड इज इन्वॉल्व इन अ लॉर्ड ऑफ लॉर्ड ऑफ साधना और लौकिका ऑल्सो बट डूइंग Uh, not doing pap karma but some shesha was there that karma has gotten over and prarabdha is such that there is no obstacle in the end and that time he gets nishta so he didn't have nishta but then he got nishta antakale api therefore there are people who take sanyasa even on the uh, at the last moment you know death on the deathbed 
so that may be possible so antakale api so that is the stuti even at the last moment if you can get this nishta please take it that will give you brahma nirvanam therefore brahma uh, antakale api asyam sthitva having remained in this particular this state is what this state is free from other states that is the state that is a natural state sthitva brahma nirvanam ruchyati one attains brahma nirvanam and this is the last shloka of the chapter so uh, there is a colophon i'll just read that for completion so say iti shrimat paramahamsa so, parivrajaka acharya shriman ananda not this okay iti shrimat bhagavad gita su upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade sankhya yogo nama dvitiya adhyaya so all the others we have seen the last this thing is sankhya yogo nama this chapter is called as sankhya yoga although bhagwan has covered a lot of karma yoga in this itself uh, there is very little left for uh, him to say in the third chapter on karma yoga but that chapter is called as karma yoga do karma yoga nam this is sankhya yoga nam dvitiya adhyaya in the end he has completed with sankhya therefore this is called as sankhya yoga although he has introduced sankhya as well as karma yoga in this chapter both he has in- introduced and in the end he has focused on this uh, sankhya therefore it is called as sankhya yoga chapter om tat sat om shanti 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 any questions okay yes uh, and uh can avidya have any other uh nanstut purusha meaning other than virodha arthe nans no 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 sadrushyam does not work no no only only virodha arthe there is no there in some cases uh, when nans is used multiple meanings are possible here only one meaning is possible only virodha arthe nothing else it is not like jnana it is uh, not abhava arthe it is not an absence of jnana it is virodha arthe there is there are absolutely no doubt you should not have any doubt it should be very clear as to why otherwise i'll tell you another uh, i told you that uh, it cannot be a reason for anything it cannot be a cause for anything but we we see avidya karya and shruti also talks about it in that manner itself another thing is that see shunyavadi say buddhist say that this prapancha has come from nothing is it possible then i'll i'll tell that person i'll give you nothing you give me all your uh, they may not have money so i'll say you with this i'll say they will give me all your temples you can empty india you can or wherever you are you can hand over all the temples because i have generated those temples from nothing not possible right there is no example for anything to come from nothing and when we say that ajnana is abhavarte meaning it is nothing then from nothing is something has come then what argument will you have with buddhists also it is illogical in fact uh, in vyakarana there is no uh, vyakarana shastra there is a discussion as to uh, there will be no uh, uh, there will be no anvaya possible there is no uh, uh, there is no vritti possible if some to understand that uh, in fact in chandogya there is a dis- discussion on this that if something has come from nothing even shruti itself uh, says that and refutes it if something can come from nothing something can not come from nothing so this kind of an anvaya will not happen so there is a discussion as to how this uh, vritti will even take place to negate uh, the negation you can't negate the negation also it's not possible so only virodhartha is possible no other meaning is possible otherwise and uh, you have to think that uh, any other meaning will not work because jnana will not take away ajnana if it is not virodhartha if no, it is something thinking. similar it can't take away no. something which is similar elsewhere there is a discussion uh, puro mimamsa ka says that uh, with karma also mukti is possible because i'll gain keep on gaining lot of punya it will take away papa and then when i take away all papa that i have done then there is mukti sounds very good first of all taking away or all, all papa is impossible because there is infinite papa and then bhashyakara says hypothetically 
let's say abhyupagama vada so there he says that let's assume that you have taken away all papa hypothetically can you remove punya punya cannot go by punya so if there is sadrishya or similarity is there between vidya and avidya that kind of a nudge then it will not work because vidya will not take away avidya because it will fall into the same category it has to be virodhatta there is no other possibility okay okay and there in uh, in the example that i gave there uh, bhashyakara says that punya will not oppose punya so if you keep on accumulating punya you will keep on getting janma because hmm. punya will also lead to janma and then elsewhere he says that punya also finally sadhak has to give up that's why sanyasa otherwise punya will also keep on bringing janma Okay. I had one more question, uh, uh, more related to a shloka from the previous class. So, um, I think it was two sixty-six, and uh, here it is said, "Ashanta se kuta sukham." Yeah. So, uh, I think uh, in this context, uh, I have heard before Ashanti also in terms of. Uh, more like a vyavaharika ashanti in the sense that if you are not peaceful you cannot be happy but here krishna is not at any point mentioning this in this context at all right this is not a context of laukika here right okay see bhavana no, because... here you should see what is bhavana this is for a person ashantasya ashantasya but abhavayatah shantihi nasti so who is this abhavayata one who does not have bhavana so you can mm-hmm. take that meaning but here we are saying that one who does not have bhavana cannot have shanti mm-hmm. okay so b- what is bhavana here if you look at bhashyakara what does bhashyakara say elsewhere bhavana uh, we have some other. why is it going to pratham adhyaya second chapter okay third chapter let's go okay that's interesting from third chapter it went to second chapter directly okay um but if you say uh, just take the laukika meaning which is fine but then it does not bring the depth which uh, uh, bhagwan is indicating here so, uh, if we say that a per- sorry a sukha will be there for a person who has shanti is that the sukha which is being indicated here it is not that sukha ashanta nasti okay. asamahita antakaranasya is the meaning of ayuktasya at the first level so hmm. when you say uh, laukika shanti that laukika shanti uh, there is no sukha if you don't have peace if that is what you think then uh, that person does not have to be asamahita antakarana uh, sorry uh, samahita antakarana we are talking about a sukha for a samahita antakarana one who has a compose antakarana peace may be there even when you have some work in t- i mean uh, some tension is there but then you are relieved of that but not that all tensions are gone right one is relieved others are there but still there is some um, composure but that is not complete composure you, your mind is engaged in something else so although there is relative peace it is not complete peace and then bhavana see bhavana what is bhavana bhavetah atmajnana abhinivesham akurvatah so that is the bhavana here is what bhavana is atmajnana abhinivesham so he is talking about bhavana as in atma so this bhavana is nididhyasana rupa this bhavana is nididhyasana and the nididhyasana is possible only when there is shravana manana siddhi so it is talking mm-hmm. about that therefore bhagwan uh, bhashyakara is interpreting if you say krishna does not say but it is in what what context sthita prajnasya lakshana so sthita prajna has nothing to do with laukika his prajna sthita prajna is one who has prajna sthita not in laukika in atman atmani nishtha thereby the context is only atman nishtha here that's why sankhya yoga right mm-hmm. this is not laukika okay anything else uh, there was one more question um yeah. so when we because i think uh, before he started, uh, started talking about the sutta prajna lakshana he mentioned that and you also mentioned that uh, 
these are actually sadhanas for the sadhaka these lakshanas mm-hmm. and uh, so this the practice of this uh, sadhanas like i think you took the example of liking a sweet and giving it up in a go to kashi or something and this mm-hmm. leads to chitta shuddhi so um this is more like a, probably a psychological question in the sense that when you are giving up something uh there is there should be uh, no suppression of the desire right it is more like um i uh, more like a giving up the desire because you are holding on to something See, it will be rasavarja it will be rare it will be rasavarja so okay uh, there is a catch 22 let's say i like sweets yeah okay. and uh, i'll say that you no know, what is the point in giving up if i have still have desire might as well eat right mm-hmm. i can't give up unless i give up the desire and the desire will never go unless i give up it's a catch 22 when will mm-hmm. it ever happen if i can't so that's why mahabharata says this a person who is a miser let's say mm-hmm. how can he become uh, when when can he become a non miser only by doing dana so there i there is, i don't remember the exact words it says that dana will happen only by performance of dana how will you become a dani by performing dana how will you become a person who uh, has given up sweets and does not like sweets only by giving up sweets mm-hmm. i mean i i don't like this way of putting but puja swami ji used to use a uh, he used to use a very uh, catchy term you know he he was famous in making all this but uh, personally i don't like it because uh, it is untruth that's the reason i don't like it but it's catchy everyone likes it there is nothing wrong in it but i personally do not like it so i'll just put it that way and just quote him uh, puja swami ji says that fake it and make it very very catchy phrase you know there will be no person who is a follower of puja swami ji who does not know this phrase fake mm-hmm. it and make it he says you fake it and then you make it i don't like that fake it word that's why the, the, that combination i don't like it that's why i say that i personally don't use it but mm-hmm. it has its source in mahabharata in that you become a dani by becoming a dani dani not jnana jnana you can't fake but he says that person it is not really a fake faking he wants to become a dani therefore he starts doing dana and when he has done dana he is dani dana asti asti ti dani right so dana mati asti ti dani and thereby it is not fake it and make it really he does not want to do dana because he is a miser but he wants to become a dani so mahabharata says that how will you become a dani if you don't give you give the dana you will become a dani similarly here you you give the give up the sweet actually you should phase up phase out you, you mm-hmm. can't just go to kashi and give up unless if you have desire but kashi is a vrata that's a vrata a person who see bhishma does, did not just take naitika brahmacharya uh, this thing uh, he didn't take this brahmacharya vachana unless he was sure that he can do it and mm-hmm. even if you are not sure once having done it you have to do it otherwise it is papa what is the mm-hmm. point of going to punyakshetra and doing something that you are unsure and then say that okay i told you that uh, this thing right uh, story about someone where uh, puja swami ji quotes this a person who said that uh, i'll uh, he had a lot of uh, quite a rich person i mean well to do person he had uh, gold rings on all his fingers he said mm-hmm. that i'll give one one uh, uh, ring i'll give to tirupati i'll give it to tirupati if something happens you know he just prayed for it he made a sankalpa and that happened now he says that it happened so soon what is it it's okay i don't think bhagwan will take it so seriously so he went to tirupati and he thought that he'll put some uh, do some dana he just put some cash and some kaani ke he put his hand he he didn't want to put his ring bhagwan took away all five mm-hmm. not one all five he said that i'll not put one i'll give some so he cheated he took away all five this is what happens if you do a sankalpa and then don't do it so going to kashi and you do a sankalpa what is the idea that i want to be a better person i want to give up something and there if you do it in that kshetra it will not work somewhere you know bangalore or uh, austria or somewhere it may not work 
So you go to Kashi and make a sankalpa in the tirth, it has, it has meaning and then you are, also have some bhaya that I should not eat. Therefore, people, therefore, in fact, people cheat by giving up something they don't, already don't like, you know. That's what they do, which is not a real vrata. So people say, I'll give up brinjal. I don't, anyway, I don't eat brinjal. I'll give up mushrooms. What is it? It's useless. You should actually give up something. It has value when you give up something that you really like. That is a vrata. And idea is to get punya, right? So, if you keep on recall, and people who do that, yeah, I like it, but I will not take it because uh, they go to uh, functions and say, I will not take this, but because I have given up in Kashi. And then nobody enforces also. If you say Kashi, I have given up in Kashi, nobody enforces also, they understand. So similarly, you should, uh, one should treat uh, it that way. And if one is not confident, give up something which you are not so, so attached to. I mean, that's the idea. But otherwise, it is a catch-22. If one says that, once they, unless rasa, rasa goes, I will not give up, then you don't have to give up, it has dropped, right? That's why they say desires leave you. Mm-hmm. You see, uh, you don't leave the desire, desires leave you. That is the case when you have lost taste for it. Because they mm-hmm. want to drag you, but you don't want to go. What will they do? Finally, they will give up. So, they, they are personified in the Shastras in that manner. They, they, finally, they go away. You know? Hmm. Otherwise, it's a cash 22. It's okay to have, uh, so that's why, uh, unless it's a Kashi Vrata, you can phase it out. Anything, it's easy to phase out, then that's why Puja Swami says outgrow, you outgrow the desires. And the comparison there is like a child out, uh, outgrows the earlier uh, toys, you know. So, a mm-hmm. kid who has grown gives up the earlier toys, you know. They are playing with something and then they say, okay, what is it, child's play. So even a child will say child's play because he is grown and so on and so forth. Finally, you give up those all those uh, childhood uh, games. Similarly, you outgrow the desire. It takes time, but then that's how. Otherwise, that's why samadhi is prescribed even for a jnani uh, to outgrow the vasanas. Mm-hmm. That's why temptation is in the end. Okay. Okay. Yes, Amma. Uh, ah, yes. So, when you gave the Nirvachanam for Nirma Maha, you said the uh, Bhavan is Veshana. What did yes. you mean by that? No. 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 Hmm. So, what will be Bhava for Mama? Mamatvam, right? Mm-hmm. That is Bhava Nirvesha. So when you say Mama, you actually mean Mamatvam there. So give, you say, uh, so you can't give up Mama. How do you give up Mama? You give Mama Bhava, right? Mm-hmm. Mama means mine. You don't give up your, yours. You give up mm-hmm. the attachment to yours. Whatever you think mm-hmm. you are. So uh, Mama Bhrata, whatever, Mama Patni, all these. Mama, Mama, Mama is there. Mama Kara. So, Mama Kara is Mama. Mama Kara is what? Ma- bhava. Bhava Nirdesha is mm-hmm. Tasya Bhava. Mm-hmm. So, Nirmama is nir- Nirmamatvam. That is the idea there. Okay. And Nirmama uh, is a person. But how do you give? Mama cannot be given up. Mama, mama Bhava can be given up. Therefore, Bhava Nirdesha is there. That is mm-hmm. Bhava Nirdesha. Nirmamatvam. Okay. One who has, is, has Nirmamatvam is Nirmama. Means one who has given up mamatvam is nirmamaha. Hmm. Okay, so mama bhava is bhava nirvesha. And also this uh, 70 and 71 shloka, hmm. you said kaman is vishyan here, no? Kama kami. And in kama kami, I said vishyan. Yeah. Not, Not in the shloka. Kami itself has in the the shloka is kama, also, right? In the shloka also kama kami is there, so there it's not vishyan. It is Vishya only, no? I said Kama Kami means Vishya here. Okay. Uh, so, see, uh, I mean. See how it is. Ka- kamyante iti Kama. Ha. So, first is ka- Vishya, how Vishya? This is uh, Kamyante iti Kama. Uh, this Kama mm-hmm. is what? It is. This Kama is Bhava. Bhava Yutpati. Second Kama. So, Kama says iti Kami, but that Kama mm-hmm. is Bhava Yutpati. What about this Kama? This Kama is not same Kama. It is not Bhava Yutpati. It is Karmani Yutpati. So, kamyanti iti kamaha. 
So he says, Kama, Kamyan, Kama, 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 Kama means what? Kamyante, iti Kama, ha, therefore Vishaya, ha. Those which are desired, Kamas are not desired, desires desire something. What is that which is desired? Vishaya. Objects are desired. Therefore, Kamyante, iti Kama, ha, by Karmani Vipatti, Kama will become Vishaya. And Tan Kama, itum Shilam, yasya. Kama, asya, 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 I said Kama, Kama, asya, 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 actually it is, there is a Nit Pratya there. So therefore, uh, nini, it is not ini, it is nini pratya and that nini pratya is uh, kamayetum Tha- shilam. So hmm. there is kamayetum shilam, yes, and what kaman kamayetum shilam. So kaman kamayetum shilam means what? De- to desire, desire, you cannot say desire, desire. You desire vishaya. So uh, one who has, one is one who is habituated, one who has habits of Desiring objects, that person is Kama Kami. Okay? Hmm. And uh, yeah, there, there seems to be a, a contradiction in these two shlokas in 70 and 71. When hmm. uh, in 71 he is saying uh, Vihaya Kaman, that is hmm. giving up all the Vishayas, hmm. uh, Shantim Adigachati. Hmm. But in 70 again, even if the Vishayas come in, hmm. one remains peaceful like a samudra. Where vishayas come in? Like, uh, like the drishtanta and the drishtanta. See, kama said, kami na, see here what is, first, what is the main sentence? Kama kami shantim na apnoti. So one who desires objects does not attain shanti. This is the meaning here. Hmm. Okay. And hmm. here vihaya kama also. Kama ka, na kama kami means what? Kama kami na apnoti means what? One who is a kama kami apnoti, moreover, is that right? Hmm. Here in 70, kama kami shantim na apnoti. What does that mean? A kama kami shantim apnoti. Right? Or kama akami, kama kami, one who is does not desire, he attains shanti. What is the meaning? Vihaya kama. What is the contradiction? Same meaning. Now, if you look at example, now you look at example, now you look at example, kama ha yam. Pravishanti. What are these kamas? These kamas are what? Earlier kama. Tadvat kama ha vishaya sannidhav api sarvata icha vishesha ha. So, tadvat kama ha means vishaya sannidhav api kama ha. This, this kama is bhavi vitpatti. So, hmm. desires enter. See, desires, that's why I said desires come about from what? From your unconscious, from the kashaya. Hmm. You don't even know what you desire. You see, for example, you look at something which you, let's let, let say you meet a person, you have met for the first time. Have you ever experienced you like that person or you dislike that person? You, it happens. You have met that person for the first time and you suddenly, for no reason, you dislike the person or you like the person. There is no interaction at all. Just by cognizing a particular person or, or anything, let's say you look at something which is served, a dish is served. You have never eaten that dish. You don't even know. The person says this is this, this, it's a vegetable, whatever, or a fruit. You have never, no, I don't want it. Why? Or, oh, it looks very good. I want to eat it. Why? You don't know where this karma came from or raga or dvesha came from. It is there in kashaya. It is in unconscious. It will manifest when there is a, there is sparsha with the vishaya. When there is a contact with the vishaya, it will, that vasana will pop up. Hmm. Without you knowing that you had it. So that, that's why Kamaha, these Kamas which are there, a person cannot know what he has because he or she has all sorts of desires. Because we have taken infinite Janmas and we have indulged in anything which, which is uh, prescribed, prohibited, neutral, we have done anything and everything across infinite Janmas. Therefore, everything is there. But in Prarabdha, something is manifest based on the circumstance and whatever is your uh, your sharira based on that there is uh, expression of that manifestation of that karma so you cannot control that you can't say that uh, i'll not uh, i'll not even feed this desire you may not mm-hmm. feed this desire okay i i don't even have that desire i don't want that desire just by saying i don't want desire the desire does not stop to come let's mm-hmm. say krodha no i'll not get angry you have no choice there of not getting angry unless you train yourself because the anger comes in. You don't get angry, the anger comes, anger manifests within. Similarly, the desire will pop up. 
now the control is for a viveki that desire whether it is leading to shreya or or is it preya or shreya whether it is leading to punya or papa this a, only a viveki can have control therefore yatati api kaunti even a person who is striving for that person also desires are there you can't do away with desire you can't wish them away therefore they will be there but you don't entertain them that's why apuryamanam achalak pratishtam samudra the samudra cannot say i don't want rivers to come the rivers will come samudra mm-hmm. cannot say that i have wish i don't want the, this nadi to come i want only this nadi samudra does not have a choice there but what choice does samudra have to remain peaceful it is it does not get turbulent even when rivers come in similarly let the desires come in but i don't i have control over myself that i remain in nishta i don't feed into those desires that's why what anandas in the end wants to give up there may be desire for sweet but i give up over a period of time the desire will die away on its own it will go away if you don't feed the desires they'll weaken now how weak they are will you will know only when you keep on keep on denying it so you have to train them you have to outgrow them that is the idea here therefore in the end you don't even have to outgrow it becomes what was sadhana for a person it becomes it becomes one's nature for jnani it is his nature therefore this is for a jnani apuryamanam achala pratishtam samudra pravishanti yadvat pravishanti they enter you it is not that he denies jnani is not mm-hmm. desi- denying anything they are entering him without causing any turbulence in the mind there is no fructification of that desire because he is krutakritya therefore mm-hmm. yadvat kama pra- yam pravishanti yam jnaninam pravishanti sarve kama ha and that person shanti mapnoti because he is not giving unto those at all because it is his very nature now to remain in atma the desires don't carry him because he has done sadhana over a long time he has chitta shuddhi he has jnana and even after jnana he is continuing his uh, non indulgence he is continuing his sanyasa he is continuing to having indriyas as atma vashya indriya hi through them uh, he remains in in atmanishta hmm. do you see the non contradiction here yes yes yeah. so vishayas is not entering uh, entertaining hmm. he is not even entertaining the desires which are popping up and that's what happens that's why i said that in meditation if you sit for meditation over a period of time you will see that as and uh, in mandukya uh, mandukya upanishad karika bhagwan gaudapada acharya says there that the when the mind becomes still it becomes sleepy so people sleep in meditation and they call it meditation i was uh, very blissful meditation why because very blissful sleep sleep also deep sleep is blissful <laughs> but he says do not fall asleep you have to be alert now if you are alert then vishayas pop up so oh, i have this task to do that no the balance is not to be alert to the world you have to be alert to the atma tattva and not fall asleep and then he says at that point in time what will happen kashaya will come up and when that unmanifest starts manifesting because they you they are to be cleansed they are being cleansed and it is also pariksha whether you are really meditating or you know you have withdrawn from all desires but then you indulge in one desire so it's a test also so this kashaya will manifest and then when the desires manifest if the person does not get moved by those then they'll just go they'll just go away it takes time it is not something which will happen within the day so it takes time and that's why even in meditation people say that uh, there are people who don't want to meditate because Uh, once they uh, when the mind is still then all sorts of things pop up they don't even know what all is there and they say i don't even i didn't even know that i have these these kind of desires mm-hmm. yes these are there because they were there in earlier janma they have not gone and we have not controlled them therefore they they will try to take take us away again if we mm-hmm. know any better we will not indulge so this is the reason they pop up and that is what happens in a meditative process um, and uh, gaudapada acharya says there that this kashaya is also one should not uh, get carried away by and remain alert and not fall asleep it's a, it's a very difficult balance and then only this shanti mapnuti
otherwise one becomes kama kami mm -hmm. okay. and why did you call it kashaya the unconscious it's it is called kashaya kash that is a word for the unconscious it's sanskrit word is it yeah in sanskrit word okay. kashaya and this not one the, the, not the kashaya that we drink <laughs> so ha ah, yeah that's what this would be it's called kashaya it's a word mm. uh, rarely used but it is used in shastras uh, mm. not everyone talks about it puja swami ji uh, calls it unconscious uh, and uh, i i i mean unconscious is a very psychological word especially western mm -hmm. psychology and puja swami mm -hmm. since he used to teach a lot of international students they would understand this better that's why he would call it unconscious uh, i mm -hmm. prefer the word kashaya so i mentioned kashaya unconscious is a little uh, unmanifest yeah. is better whatever desires were unmanifest they become manifest unconscious is a little uh, too western psychological uh, psychology yeah. word for me mm -hmm. so but that's the idea there uh, to talk to someone who understands that easily uh, use unconscious using unconscious is fine but otherwise mm -hmm. i would say kashaya is that uh, these Uh, i would say vasanas puja swami ji didn't like the word vasana uh, so he never used uh, uh, that word samskaras so samskara is another word for vasana and mm -hmm. those samskaras which are unmanifest they are and samskaras are actually unmanifest they become manifest over a period of time but uh, there is some issue there of misinterpretation so he prefers the word unconscious uh, but kashaya is a good word because i think uh, mandukya karik or somewhere that word uh, is used so kashaya is a better word or even vasanas okay okay and just one last thing the previous uh, classes recording is not showing up on oh, the wall I, i forgot that hey, yeah i forgot that but please note that there is an error in the shloka i just clarified today so uh, that mm -hmm. that uh, error is fixed in the uh, i have taken an opposite meaning and i have uh, taken literal meaning of charan and interpreted it uh, by uh, taking uh, as moving the indriyas uh, vishayas but that vyukta does not have that meaning mm -hmm. uh, vyukta does not have the meaning of uh, like uh, jnana and vidyana that kind of meaning yukta and vyukta do not have mm -hmm. uh, vyukta has only one meaning which is opposite to yukta not mm -hmm. uh, addition to yukta so it mm -hmm. is there in uh, Uh, that uh, shloka that i interpret and in the question answer i had answered it okay uh, so i'll share it i uh, i forgot i think uh, kalyan ji also asked for it i forgot about it okay namaste okay namaste thank you